Hello mga ka-Crown! Welcome back to our YouTube channel, The Crown Philippines. This is Christian. At tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang ating coverage this pageant season. And uh, today, we have another special guest. Uh, one of the most anticipated comebacks in Philippine pageant history. At uh, sasabihin na, we'll get to know more about that in a short while. But before anything else, of course, I would like to give a big shout out to our almost half a million followers on Facebook. We're on a road to 100,000 followers on Instagram. And help us achieve another milestone on YouTube. We're on a road to 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. Kaya sa mga hindi pa po subscribe just click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be updated with our recent news, reviews, and pageant coverage, and you can be part of our growing crown nation. And of course, for more and more, more updates, you can visit our official website. It's www.thecrown.com. Ito na, Universe! Ready na ba kayo? <laughs> Miss Universe Philippines, Bacoor, Victoria Velasquez Vincent. Grabe yung most intense and it's <laughs> ano most unanticipated. <laughs> Hello mga ka crown BBB here your Miss Universe Philippines Baka or City. I'm so happy to be back and here live with you Yay. in person. Super thank you. I remember back in 2021, talagang nakalinya kami na parang online we have to do an oh. online interview with the BBB and then now we're here. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Um press presentation, trending on social media with your performance, you're landing the leaderboards, um, pageant page, every af every pageant page. How is the competition this year? Honestly, I have no words. It's it's really exciting. It's so different compared to 2021 because there was COVID back then and you know the live events were very limited. Uh, so that was actually my first press con then. We didn't have one back in 2021. So I'm just, I'm really happy to have like a full pageant experience now. It's really exciting. So I, I was telling the team, because um, of course we're following your posts and uh, syempre after 2021, you went back to your, uh, your, your profession. Mm -hmm. You're doing things more private na, And then parang, mm, on oh, yeah, private na si <laughs> me, So and there was one post as well that when you where you mentioned uh, when you talked about um, prioritizing your peace mm. and you were spending quality time with your mom. Mm -mm. So now after 2021, you're putting yourself back again in the public eye. Of course, mm. ibang class ang Filipino pageant fans. Yeah. How are you going to are you ready na ba again? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm I'm just a little bit more selective about mm -hmm. what I share. You know, I keep sort of my professional career and my family life very private. And then also anything that's still, you know, in the planning phase. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was planning to come back, yeah. then nobody knew about that. So those kinds of things I really keep to myself or a select group of people because the way that I see it you know if people don't know your plans then they cannot try to get in the way of them and so ayun, I'm ready naman to, to really put myself out there and this time I really want to show people more of myself um, even though there are elements of myself that are private there's more of myself that I want to show this time last time I think I didn't have so much relatability because I was hindi naman closed off but I'm the kind of person na parang uh, I connect better with people in person. Mm. In Shemper back then, there was everything mm. online. So it was just very different for me to be able to connect with people on a deeper level just through social media. Uh, but I'm really excited this time to show the universe what I'm all about. <laughs> Shemper, your fans are so protective of you. Mm. And uh, they would also ask, na parang, um, are you ready to face uh, possible setbacks or challenges that you've encountered previously mm -hmm. yeah for sure actually you know it's funny because my friends and my family and even my supporters they're more affected min -san, mm -hmm. than i am so for example mm -hmm. i think one of my friends read like a bachelor comment online the other day yeah. and she took it to heart she was getting really defensive about it and i was like girl okay lang yun. and like mm -hmm. i was the one that was like consoling her even though the comment was about me because I've gotten to a point now where I really just don't take anything personally. I've learned that you know, people will have their opinions and that's okay. It doesn't excuse people being unkind, 
But there are so many things out of your control. You can't control other people, deba. Right? So I'm just, yeah, I'm just enjoying the process a lot more this time. And, you know, all of the setbacks that occurred last time, I learned from them. And so that's the most important thing for me. Because if you don't learn from your setbacks, then you don't grow. Mm -hmm. So would you consider that to be the biggest lesson you learned uh, from 2021? Because, um, <clears throat> of course, uh, it's, it's not just any other competition it's miss universe philippines it's super lucky super bigat ng competition would you consider that to be the biggest lesson you learned from 2021 well i've learned so many things but i think the biggest thing for me is just to let go mm -hmm. and enjoy the process um i was reading a book once about it, it talked about how in life, we should really learn to be like water. Mm -hmm. So for example, in a river, of course, there's like a lot of rocks and everything in the river, but the rocks don't stop when they get to, a, uh, sorry, the water doesn't stop when they get to a rock. They just go around it and they just keep going. And so that's kind of what I try to embody in my life as well, just to like be like water <laughs> and just to keep going with the flow of life rather than trying to resist everything. Because at the end of the day, not everything's going to go your way. You can't control that. But what you can control is the way that you go about it. And hence, that's the reason why I'm getting this more relaxed, mm -mm. calmer <laughs> uh, vibe. Yeah. Better still, the fans would ask, how competitive has VVV become mm. after 2021? Because mm -mm. right now, I know she may have had the experience. She know the tricks of the trade probably because of her experience back in 2021. But as pageant enthusiasts and your fans, your, your uh, solid fan base, how competitive have you become after 2021? Honestly, this is going to sound really weird, but I almost feel like I'm less competitive now. Oh. Uh, Nung 2021, I don't think many people realize unless they were in my circle of, you know, like my team or anything. Um, but I was so gigil back then, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. I was so competitive, I was so gigil, I wanted things to be perfect all the time. Um, but now I'm at a point where I'm really lucky to have my former self to compare myself to. Because although, yes, of course I'm competitive, but I'm competing with my former self. Yeah. I'm just trying to be better than I was back then. Which I think, you know, everyone should just aim to be better than they were yesterday. Right? Uh, so yeah, but in terms of competing with the other girls, I, I learned, especially after last time, you know, we all became really close after the competition. We're all still friends. And so far, I'm competitive. I'm just trying to be better than I was back then. Because, of course, the tatalas ng mata ng mga pageant enthusiasts, they think, how is uh, VVV measuring up the competition right now? But they're getting this relaxed, um, go with the flow vibe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally would say it's working. Oh, thank you. Congratulations, yeah. V. And um, everyone's just so proud. And lalong nag cheer tulo yung, yung uh, solid fan base. Um, <clears throat> I would follow up to that question. Um, would you say, but would you say that maturity and experience give you better chances of winning? Because especially right now, you know, with the um, removal of the age restrictions, mm. yung mga favorite queens from the past would also have been joining and uh, they also signed up and of course they're bringing along with them good experience mm. um, especially those who have uh, represented the country in the international stage yeah. do you agree that maturity and experience give you a better chance of winning um well firstly i don't personally think that you can put an age on maturity or experience mm. you know i think that's very different depending on the person and then also i think Experience, because you might experience something, but you might not learn from that experience. So I think what's more important than maturity and experience is whether or not you've learned from the things that you've gone through. Because I think as humans, it's natural for us to become creatures of habit. And so if we go through an experience over and over again, but we're still not learning from it, we're still not growing. So no, I don't think maturity and experience uh, are necessarily the right words. I would say um, one's ability to learn from their experiences is more important. 
and how you apply it, no? Para yeah. to the current situation. Yeah. Tama naman yun, because we, l- we experience a lot day after day, mm. but if you don't really learn from it and apply it in your uh, daily life, mm-hmm. bali wala lang. Yeah, yeah, you're just like repeating the same thing over and over again. So yeah, learning from mistakes, learning from everyone that you're surrounded by is so important. So there was, um, of course, there was a gap of like a year um, before joining back. In within that span of time, which did you have any activity or achievement that you think mm. empowered you the most? Uh, I think I'd have to say in my professional career mm. back in Australia, I I'm a female working in a predominantly male industry, <clears throat> but in the past couple of years since I've been gone. I've managed to thrive and I've managed to build on my career and I'm really proud of myself for that. And as much as people might not realize, there's a lot of parallels um, or interchangeable skills between the construction industry and then the pageantry world, believe it or not. Uh, So again, just learning from everything that I go through and applying it to different elements of my life, whether I learn it from construction and apply it to pageantry or I learn it from pageantry and apply it to construction. So... um at this point, V, I would like to ask your permission to touch on one topic that you that you opened up uh, recently. I'm not sure if you were able to talk about this at, as well um, during the last edition, mm-hmm. but about the kidnapping incident mm-hmm. that you mentioned, yeah. because I saw also I got information. Correct me if I'm wrong that uh, sometime recently you went back to the place where. The incident happened. Mm. Um, can you tell us more about, you know, your how did it affect your um, life's uh, your perspective in life, mm. and uh, primarily as you go along uh, your journey in this universe, Philippines? Yeah, it's something that I'll dive into a little bit more throughout the journey, um, and I'm in a position now where I'm more willing, I think, or more ready to be open about it because I have healed from it and I have learned so much from it. And then also I think my story can also be really impactful for other people that might have experienced similar things. Uh, so I, I don't personally remember it because I was only three years old at the time. But um, for a long time after I found out, I was very disappointed in one of the countries that I call home. You know, I was really hurt by the fact that that had happened to me and I was very scared. But then as I got older and I heard more about my mom's early life and her story and, you know, the way that her family struggled when they were younger. uh, And then also when I was exposed to more of the underprivileged communities here in the Philippines, I realized that desperate times call for desperate measures, right? And that does not mean in any circumstance that any sort of crime is okay. But coming from that place of understanding made me realize, you know, I I shouldn't be upset or frustrated about it, but rather I should just use my story to, and use, you know, the privileges that I have that other people might not have to try and make an impact. And so in 2021, I touched on it a little bit, but probably not as much as I will this time, that's for sure. Uh, Because I think my my story is a powerful one. uh, And I know that It's not an isolated incident, you know, it's probably something that's very common here in the Philippines. And I'm so blessed to have, uh, for lack of a better term, survived Mm -hmm. that incident. Uh, And so I feel like I'm sort of in a position where I'm morally obligated to use my story to help other people. And as I see it, it's showing bravery. Mm -hmm. Because you went back to the place where it happened. Did you have to do that? I didn't have to, but I wanted to. I wanted to, I think, you know, I think it was one of the first steps for me to really heal from Mm -hmm. it. Because as much as I thought I had healed from it, because I don't like necessarily remember it, um, going there, I don't know, I I felt some type of way in my heart. um, And it was really the first step for me to really just get a grasp on the situation and, and really just empower myself to use my story. Did you ask permission from your mom that you're gonna do that? Yeah, actually, she, I love my mom so much and she's very protective of me ever since, um, which is completely understandable. Um, 
and you know, even so, the first time I went back there was in 2021, mm -hmm. and then I went back there again recently with my mom. Mm. Um, and the hardest part for me was seeing how much she was hurting, because she she remembers it, True. Mm -hmm. um, And so I feel like baka she relived that moment. Um, so that was really hard for me to to see my mom so upset about it, um, but. You know, my mom and both of my parents really, they're so supportive in the way that, you know, anything that I set my mind to and anything that I want to sort of put myself through, they're more than willing to back me 100%. It's such an inspiring story, especially for young girls or to everyone who, parang you, have, you just really have to face mm. your fears mm -mm. Um, for you to be able to have closure, I would say and uh, build on that experience. Mm. So thank you for sharing that story. Um, it's very, it's very empowering. Um, how's Tita? Is she here? <laughs> She's not here anymore, uh, okay. actually. I miss her so much. Uh, she was here for a month, and actually my mom had never, I'm just trying to think if this is correct. She had never taken a domestic flight mm. in the Philippines. Uh, like I said, she, she had a really hard childhood and upbringing. Um, but just recently, when she was here, I took her to Cebu with mm -hmm. me. It was her first time in Cebu. She was so excited. Oh, first so, time in Cebu? Yeah. And then nagulat siya. <laughs> like, she didn't realize. Uh, she thought that Parang Cebu is like very island still, yeah. which I mean, parts of it are, diba. Right? Um, but she didn't realize that Cebu like had its own little city also. And I'm sure she show, she's so proud of you signing up again in Miss Universe Philippines. Yeah. What was her reaction? Did, uh, did you tell her right away the moment that you thought about, yes, I'm going to sign up? Mom, I'm signing up for Miss <laughs> was that the situation? Was that the case? So my parents are like my best friends. Mm. Uh, and so I hadn't made my mind up. I was still kind of tossing between because it really, you know, I had to figure out what my priorities were and, you know, leaving my job behind to come back here was a really big decision for me. Uh, so <laughs> I remember I was FaceTiming my parents because they were in New Zealand, I was in Australia. And I was telling them, I was like, you know, I, I have this feeling that I want to join oh. again. And then actually I was really surprised because my dad, he's very uh, like work oriented. He's all about, you know, stability and just like growing your career and everything like that. Uh, and so I was like, oh, maybe my dad is not gonna like like this idea, because uh -huh. uh, I was like I was very much settled in Melbourne. Um, but actually, my dad, Byron, he didn't even think twice. He just said, go for it. Wow. I'm here for you. You go for it. Where are my mom on the other hand? <laughs> <laughs> my mom, because she's the kind of mom. She's so protective. I love her so much. Um, she's the kind of mom that reads comments. And then, then you do. So, so <laughs> 2021 means then because I didn't see a comment. Uh, but then I would call her, would be talking about like how I am, and then she'd be like, nah, I saw this comment. They said blah blah blah. And I'm like, Mom, I didn't even see that until you told me. And so um, yeah, she's the kind of mom. She she's very invested in everything that I do. I'm so grateful. Uh, and so her first instinct was oh no, my daughter's going to get bashed again. Uh. And she was like, are you ready for that? Um, and ako naman, like I've grown so much over the past few years, and I'm affected sa mga basher comments, to be honest. Um, but I asked her, I was like, are you ready for that? Is the question. Um, but yeah, my parents, they're amazing. Anything that I decide to do, whether it's in my professional career, pageantry, or in my personal life, you know, they, they trust me enough to just let me make my own decision and then be there for me no matter what. Oh, mm -hmm. we super love our parents. <laughs> diba, mga Hi, shout Mom. out. <laughs> and Dita, shout out po. And, uh, syempre, before we continue, we'd like to give a big shout out to 
the Miss Universe Philippines organization for allowing us to do this interview with the ladies and also thank you as a Olympus Studio sa ating mm -hmm. venue today and also our sponsor here sa the Crown Philippines Tasa Mobile Cafe for sending us some cookies ayan po so for uh, any events and celebrations you have you may need for uh, a mobile coffee or milk tea or pastries ayan you can contact and Instagram account. And syempre, makakalimutan ba natin ng Aces and Queens? Maraming maraming salamat po. And Origin Management for uh, helping us to have this interview. It's a very hectic schedule ni uh, Miss VVV. Ayan. Okay. At this point naman, VVV, we're going to uh, ask some questions or entertain some questions from our Crown community. The first question is coming from Rina Jane Latore of Muntinlupa. And she asks... Some argue that social media followings can lead to echo chambers and confirmation bias, where users only engage and follow contents and pages that align with their existing beliefs. How do you foster open dialogue and diversity of viewpoints on your platforms? Mm, you know, for me, I think it's really important uh, for people that have a platform to only share factual information. Uh, and not try and push their own agendas or their own opinions on other people. Because at the end of the day, you know, our minds are so malleable and people can be so quick to believe what they read online. So it's really important na first, anyone who has a platform or anyone in general, before you post anything, you have to make sure you take responsibility for that and make sure that it's correct. Mm -hmm. um, but then on the other hand, I also think that we have a responsibility to make sure that we're obtaining information from, you know, viable sources, you know? Like, I personally don't go to Instagram to find out about current events, you know? I, I'll read the news and I'll read a variety of different, uh, like, news websites, because at the end of the day, even news websites also have their own opinions, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think it's all about taking responsibility and taking accountability on both ends, as a reader, but also as a poster. Ang ganda nun, keyword accountability. Mm -hmm. Your page, your rules, mm -hmm. plus accountability. Mm -hmm. Ayan. Another question from our Crown community, and this is coming from Cherry Liabres of uh, Mandaluyong City. Um, being born with an Irish father and Filipino mother, some argue that there may be pressure mm -hmm. to conform to cultural expectations, such as maintaining close ties with extended family or participating in traditional customs. Mm. How do you balance honoring your Kiwi, Irish, Filipino heritage mm. with asserting your own individuality? Mm. I've been really lucky in so many ways, but um, in one aspect, because I'm also very religious, right, as many Filipinos mm. are, uh, my dad and his side of the family are also very conservative and religious as well. So they really had, my parents really had that alignment from the very start. And so there was no sort of like polarization on that front. My parents were very much aligned. And then the way that I was raised, uh, they always raised me to have respect and to, you know, I, I was raised religious. But then they also raised me as an independent woman who can make her own decisions, which I'm, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, and then on the cultural side, um, I guess living in New Zealand, of course, I'm more exposed to that side of um, my family uh, from a young age. But my dad has been amazing in the way that, you know, my mom made the sacrifice of leaving the Philippines and leaving her family to go and live in New Zealand and start a family there. Uh, with my dad and so my dad also took it upon himself to make sure na literally every year my mom would go back we would go back because it's really family so important to both of my parents like I said they're my best friends our extended family are you know we're also close uh, and so my dad's always encouraged my mom to maintain those roots um, and maintain that connection with her family and then in turn I've also done the same thing Mm -hmm. And then actually my dad, he, in 2021, he was always asking me, he was like, V, have you studied your Tagalog? Like, are you learning more? Blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So he's always encouraged me to, to stay connected with my mom's side of the family and our side of the history and heritage. Alam mo, in connection to that, um, 
mas lumakas yung clamor for you to come back to Miss Universe Philippines when Filipinos knew about you know you declining mm-hmm. the offer of Miss Universe uh, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. We want to hear it straight from you, mm-hmm. um, your thought process, why it, why that happened. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a decision that I made lightly. Mm-hmm. It took me, I think I took like a week of going back and forth with my parents, talking about it, also talking about it with my team, um, and then also talking about it with the org, because yeah. they were also very supportive of whatever I decided to do, they, they were willing to support me. So I was so grateful for that, but the, the end decision was, obviously I declined, but for me, the Miss Universe charity, Miss Universe Philippines charity title meant so much to me. Uh, and you know, I, I knew that I was blessed to be given that title. And the reason why I came into pageantry in the first place was because I want to give back to our people here in the Philippines specifically. Um, at least in the first instance before Miss Universe, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, and so it didn't make sense to me at the time, Naparang. I would be like a hypocrite. I would be going against anything or everything that I um, believed in coming into pageantry. If I were to give up my title where I had the honor of you know, helping our communities and everything just so that I could go and compete internationally, you know, I. I as much as you know, we all love the idea of Miss Universe Philippines on stage at Miss Universe, you know, and it would mean the utmost world to me for me to wear the Philippine sash across my chest. Um, but I don't, I'm not doing it just so I can walk on the Miss Universe stage. You know, it's so much more than that to me. And so at the time, it didn't make sense for me to give up my title here in the Philippines just to do that. Wow. Mm. I saw the Philippine flag now. <laughs> Another question from our Crown community from Jacqueline Santos from Pasig. Which do you favor more, inclusivity or individuality? Where inclusivity allows no restrictions, while individuality highlights the celebration of unique qualities of a specific group. I think it was brought about by Miss Universe removing mm. the restrictions, but there are also still groups who would want or prefer the traditional set of requirements for a beauty pageant. Mm. In your case, uh, which would you uh, favor more, inclusivity or individuality? Honestly, I, I genuinely think they mm. go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You know, I think as a society, we should learn to be inclusive of individuals, no matter how they choose to express themselves or you know, who they are, what stage of their life they're in. Uh, but honestly, if, if you were to make me choose one, for me personally, um, the way that I see it, uh, how do I explain this? <laughs> Individuality is more about being comfortable with yourself and being happy with yourself. Whereas inclusivity or the desire to be included in something is, you know, the desire to be accepted by other people. And for me personally, you know, I know that there are people out there that might not like me, you oh. know. Um, but as long as I like me, then nothing else matters. As long as I know that I'm a good person, even if other people say negative things about me, they are affected by that. So it's a sensitive topic, Naman, and I think, like I said, they go hand in hand and both should be pushed 100%. Everyone should be included for their individuality. But ako naman personally, like, I would rather be happy in my own self uh, and not be accepted by other people rather than be accepted by other people but not be happy in my own self. Oh my God. Pwede bang fast forward na sa Q&A challenge? <laughs> the universe of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, syempre, uh, the Filipino fad, pageant fans are raving about uh, you know, competing in Mexico. Lumalabas lagi yung term na Latina Slayer. Mm-hmm. Kumbaga. And you're one of the names na laging lumulutang na if she is uh, sent to Mexico, Latina Slayer ang label K, um, KVVV. Now, a Latina Slayer, they would say, would have the three essentials of a beauty queen. Sabe, mm. relatability, Q&A prowess, and stage presence. Mm. Which of these three do you think you have in your toolbox? Can I choose more than one? Sure. Uh, I'll give an explanation as well for my reasoning. Um, Relatability, believe it or not, 
I mean, you guys saw me before crouching on the floor doing my makeup. <laughs> um, I, I genuinely believe I have that. I don't think I showcased it as much as I should have in 2021. So I've always had it, but I'm in a better place now to express it more and to show people more, which is really good. Um, Q&A prowess, you know what? I'm actually, I feel a little bit of pressure this time. <laughs> as in... Um, you know, I, I'm so grateful that I was, you know, I was deemed as top in interview yeah. last time. Um, mm. But I think that there's definitely a little bit of pressure and there's a lot of girls. In fact, all of the girls that I've spoken to so far, they are really c great communicators. Uh, so there's a bit of pressure there. I think I still have it in my toolbox. Um, the one problem that I'm currently facing um, is I'm so dal dal na. Like you guys can probably even tell from this, diba? At nek tata galo. Oh, oh. I really, I, so dear. Wait, I have a story for you. Oh. Okay, so, so I actually find Q and A harder now. Firstly, because I am very dal dal, so mm. I'm like trying to condense it into thirty seconds. But also, because in Melbourne, my like pinaka closest friend there is. Filipino and so of course I've I've learned so much more Tagalog and Tagalog has been you know part of my everyday life there in Melbourne also to a point na parang I think in both languages now and I noticed back when I was still in Australia if I spent time with my friend on a Sunday when I got to work on a Monday because I lahat ng colleagues got there all this like Australian mm -hmm. English speakers grabe yung processing time ko like because I was speaking Tagalog the day before, that was on Monday. When they said something to me, parang I'm like translating it in my head. Ano na nga yun? And I think they were like, Are you okay? Bakit ng Tagalog? So yeah, that that's a current a current challenge that I'm facing, I guess, with Q and A. I know my thought process is really good, which I'm really grateful for. But it's just a matter of you know condensing it and also translating in my head. Um, in terms of stage presence. <laughs> We all know, I think, Pasarela was one of my weaknesses back in 2021. Not that it was, you know, bad. Like, I was mm. still okay at it. Um, but just, like, the energy, I think, that I have on stage. Because I'm naturally a very, like, mellow person. Um, but the stage presence, I'm still working on. But don't worry. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of relatability, I would have to say, you're such a, you've been such a sweetheart mm. to... The Filipino fans. How does it feel to know? Transitioning to my question, how does it feel to know that you still have a solid fan base supporting you? Mm. Um, kahit na nag-private ka na, parang for a year you focused on your career. Mm. Um, medyo, syempre, uh, bumalik ka sa, Aus uh, sa, sa Australia, sa mm. New Zealand, and then means konti na lang time sa Philippines. Mm. But when you came back, you still have this solid fan base talaga, supporting all the way. Mas mm. pinatindi pa yung universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm so grateful. Even when I was um, still in Australia, you know, my supporters would message me. You know, if I would post like a, like a milestone or mm -hmm. something, they would message me and congratulate me and say that they're supporting me even outside of the pageantry realm. And honestly, I, you can't put a price on that. Like the kindness that they've shown me, even though so many of them I haven't even met. Uh, and, you know, the good that they can see in me, even if they haven't met me, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be back. And I was actually I just surprised then at the, the way that the pageantry realm sort of reacted to my comeback. Uh, yeah, that's really special. Ako, I, I just have to say this, no? Kasi, syempre, as an interviewer, um, mahirap yung trabaho, um, especially when you're touching on uh, very sensitive and uh, political, so, some social issue questions. Pero, with VVV right now, you know, parang, um, it's a smooth conversation. Pinadali mo yung trabaho ko. Um, congratulations. I can feel, I can see how far you've come. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lessons that you mentioned earlier, I na apply mo for. Everyone's just so excited. I'm sure everyone will be uh, much more excited after uh, hearing this interview. But unfortunately, we have a very limited time fee. Mm -hmm. And again, would like to thank you for uh, allowing us to do this with you. But before we let you go, meron tako isang hirit. 
why do you want to win Miss Universe Philippines? It's uh, a golden question. Do you want a pageant answer in 30 seconds or do you want a, a dal-dal answer? A dal-dal <laughs> answer. <laughs> Parang mas okay kami sa dal-dal answer. <laughs> okay, good. Because I'm so dal-dal. Um, honestly, for me, you know, coming back here was not a decision that I made lightly mm. because I had to sacrifice a lot to come back. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm very intentional about everything that I do. And back in 2021 and now, the intention remains the same. You know, I, I genuinely believe in the platform that pageantry has, especially here in the Philippines. Um, and, you know, the things that I believe in and the values and the vision that I hold, the mission that I'm on, uh, I, I really want to use this platform to sort of really push for that. Because, you know, I'll be the first to admit that I grew up in New Zealand with, you know, a, a relatively straightforward life. And millions of Filipinos don't know what that is like to feel like, right? Um, and my mom included, you know, her story really drove me to, to come to pageantry in the first place, but also to come back again. Uh, I, I really want to use the platform to, to help people. I want to use it in conjunction with my architectural background uh, because, you know, I, I don't think people are fully aware of the power that architecture holds in terms of, you know, helping to solve social issues. I don't think anywhere near enough people are aware of the organizations that are already helping the Philippines and the way in which anyone can go and help them, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's really why I'm here. It, it's, it's all about my vision and my mission and my purpose uh, and using everything in my toolbox uh, to, to really push for the things that I believe in and to help our people. Ayan na mga ka-crown. Bardagula na talaga ito <laughs> sa May 22. Aabangan po natin yan. We're bringing the floor, giving the floor back to you, V. So uh, you may want to give out some thanks or mm. invite everyone to follow your social media accounts. And where else can we get updates about this Universe Philippines? Hello mga ka-crown. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I cannot begin to explain to you how I feel about the reception of me coming back. I'm so grateful. Uh, thank you for your support for the past three years while I've been away. Uh, of course, you can follow me on Victoria Velasquez Vincent at Instagram. Um, also on TikTok. I am not too active there, but I'll try to be. Uh, most of my updates are through my Instagram. Uh, but then also I have a broadcast channel that I'm trying to actually use a little bit more for a parang. I feel weird na parang talking to myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so ayun, I'll try to do that more and then we also have a telegram group chat you can message me if you want to join that for more updates other than that I hope I get to meet a lot of you in person soon God bless Bye.